Hello everyone, this is your cat tutor, and today we're going to go over two very useful features, one of them being the hole wizard, how to use holes, how to create holes, tapped uh, clearance holes, etc. Uh, and also uh, shelling, we're going to go over uh, what is shelling, which both combined, both of these features combined can help out a lot uh, when uh, creating electronic boxes for either robotic hobby hobbyists or uh, in consumer products uh, can be very very handy so I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new part so I'm gonna go part now we're going to create a sketch I'll select the top plane so I'm creating a box so right click sketch I'll select my center rectangle again uh, you can pick a rectangle to be from the corner a uh, three-point rectangle uh, even a parallelogram, but I'm going to do a center rectangle mean center meaning I start from the center outwards I pick the origin Usually I like to pick the origin and I'll dimension it. So I go to smart dimension then I pick um, This one or first one I think uh, eight inches sounds like a good round number by four I'm Going to exit so the first thing I'm going to do is just create a solid block. So I'll extrude this rectangle, maybe one and a half inches tall, to fit, I don't know, PCBs, electronics, LEDs, buttons, etc. One and a half inches seems to be good enough. So now I'm going to select the hole wizard. But before creating holes, before using this hole wizard, option here at the top you're going to assign the locations where these holes are going to be specified we're going to be located so I want this box to have a lid on the top and uh, I want to be able to screw this lid on onto this bottom uh, square so I'll create my holes around the perimeter of this block so I'll right click on this top surface then sketch go to direct view I'm going to turn it upside down doesn't matter in this case, it's going to be pretty symmetrical, but I like things to be right side up. So I'm going to select random locations of my holes, or I want my holes to be. I'll just place a few points. In case you didn't see that, it was real quickly. I went to the point uh, geometry, point selection over here, uh, and then just selected uh, several points. Just eight points to be exact but see they're a little bit all over the place so I'm going to constrain them in a way that they make sense to me first I want these top three to be in line these bottom three to be in line these two to be in line and I want the same vertically so these horizontally and these vertically so one way I could do that is I could individually select each point so I can select point one hold down my control button my control key on my keyboard and continue selecting the rest. So I selected three. Now I can let go of my control key. And I can see on the left menu that there are several options for constraining. So I'll select the horizontal constraint. Now they're all in line. So if I move one, all three should move in line. Uh, the three points is not that difficult, but if you have, I don't know, dozens of these points, it will be a little bit more difficult to select one by one so another thing I can do I can just select all of them at once with my with my mouse now these three are selected I can do horizontal I can do the same for the middle ones now the middle ones I want them to be centered so here they're in line horizontally with each other but I want them centered with the part so I'll select the origin and I'll select one of these points I'll select the left point. Again, remember to keep the control key uh, held down. Now you let go of that, and again, this pops up immediately horizontal. So now they're all in line horizontally, but I want them to be in line vertically as well. So I'll repeat the same exercise vertically. If any of this is too fast for you, feel free to send me a message or uh, leave a comment asking any doubts you may have. So I'll try to locate them near to the edge, wherever that seems to be. So now, they're somewhat constrained. Now 
they're still blue, so you can see they're still under define down here. So now I'll give them a dimension to the edge. And I'll say perhaps quarter inch. That seems good enough. So if I constrain this to both edges, let's say 0.25. Now all those in line will be fixed, such as this one and this one. This one is fixed to this edge, but it's not fixed to any other vertical edges. So I can still move uh, left and right. These were fixed because not only not only were they originally uh, fixed to the origin, but now they're also fixed to this edge because this point here is in line with this one. So it will share the same dimensions as this one over here. Uh, now one thing to note is I want them both to be the same distance from both edges. So that's why I picked 0.25 for this one and 0.25 for this one. Uh, however, if I change my mind later and I change this to say 3 eighths or 0.375 inches, now I have to go and do the same for this one. And that seems double the work. So instead of doing that, what I can do is I can change this dimension to automatically change to this exact dimension every single time I want it. The way I do that is I know what this dimension is. It is called here as on the left panel as D1 at sketch 2, meaning dimension 1 on the second sketch. Whereas this one is D2 at sketch 2. So the are both. All of, all of the dimensions here are, are on sketch 2, but this is D1 and this is D2. So what I'll do is I'll tell it that I want D2 to be D1. So I double click on it, and here I'll type it as an equation, starting with an equal sign, it's just like an Excel. And now I'll use my quotation marks, so quotation, and then I'll type in D1 at sketch 2. Now I'll close my quotations and you'll see that the color will change. Now it changes to blue, meaning that it's a good a good uh, equation. Now I just press enter. And now it shows this sigma here, meaning that it's an equation. So that this is a relationship to something else. So every time I change this, 0.375, this one will automatically change. It shows 3, 0.38 because it's only two decimal points, but it's actually 3. So I'll go back to 125. So now I'll do the same for the rest. Now I only, I'll do the opposite corner. That way, all of them will be fixed. And I can do the same thing. I can use the same equation because I want all of them to be the same distance from all the edges. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll just copy this entire thing. Control C. And now I'll add that to here. Control V, so I'm just copying. I click outside, and I click OK, and I do the same for the other edge. Now Control V again, one last time. So now every single one of my points is constrained. You see, every every little point is black, so everything's constrained, and all of them. Are referencing the very first dimension so if I change this one every single point will change that distance away from the edges so I'm done with my point so I can exit my sketch now now that I exit my sketch you can see they're in light faint bluish a little difficult to see but okay, now we go and start our whole wizard option so here we have all the whole types from counter bores to counter sinks to simply blind holes or just regular holes uh, to straight taps or anything that's tapped and etc you can have your own customized hole but I want these to be tapped given that we'll be screwing something from the top uh, the top one should be a clearance whether that's a, a blind hole a straight hole a countersink or a, or a counter bore but the bottom one is the one that will have the threads, therefore I want that one to be tapped. Uh, so I'll select, I'll select my tapped straight tap right here. You can see that it has one way you tell it is, is a tap. It's that it has this outline around it. It's very faint, but it's you can see here. It's got that dashed line around it. That's just conventional uh, symbol for uh, 
a tabbed hole. So now I'm going to select it's already in inches, so I'll leave it in inches. I want it to be a tabbed hole. And the size that I'll pick, well, I'll pick a 440 size hole. So this SOLIDWORKS has a library of the most commonly used holes, starting with a number zero hole, 080, all the way to over two inches. Um, so I'll pick, pick 440. Uh, so remember, four is the size, 40 is the number of uh, threads per inch. So this one has 40 threads per inch. This one has 48 threads per inch. 440 is much more common than a 448. I'll pick 440. My condition, uh, blind, uh, perhaps blind, blind would be uh, only to a certain distance, but I can make my tab to be blind, but I can make the entire hole to be 2.5, which is the length of the entire thing. And then automatically the threads that SOLIDWORKS picks by default is two times the diameter of your, I believe the major diameter of your hole, in this case a 440. Now I need to select the positions. So now you go to, from the type, type button, you go to the position button, so you click, or the position tab, sorry. Now we select the surface where we want our holes to be on. So I'll select this surface here. That's where I want it. So now you can see that this uh, selector will allow me to pick my, my holes. So since I already created my points, I can just click on it on each one of those points. Now it would be a little bit easier if you change it to snap. So if you right click and you quick snap it to a point snap, now it'll it'll just snap it to the nearest point, which is much easier than actually hovering right above the point. So I'll just get quick snap is can be really useful. So it's picking the center. So it's sometimes it works better than other times. So now I selected all of them, and it looks like uh, I selected the the length would be I think it was one and a half and not two and a half. There we go. So now essentially I'm going through the entire part. I'm going through the entire part and you can even see the drill a tip coming out through the entire part. However, I am telling it that the actual threads will only be 0.22. So the threads will end at some point here. But I, I want my entire part to, to have a hold so that it's easier to manufacture. Blind holes are a little bit more difficult, especially if you're going to tap them. So it's easier to just go with the drill, uh, drill the entire part through, and then thread a portion of it. So now you can see they are through holes with a part of it being threaded. So this part is where the thread will be. However, you can see one thing here. Uh, there's two things. One, it created this countersink that I didn't want it to create because there's going to be a lid on it. So I will go back to my hole feature. So I right click on this and then edit feature. I'm going to go to the bottom, the part that I, the options that I hit. So these options here. And it shows here that it says near side countersink. I'm going to uncheck this box so that it just creates the hole. In other words, it's an additional unnecessary operation for the machinist. So now I'm going to check OK. So now you can see that that it's uh, that countersink has gone. So now I'm going to continue with my part, and I'm going to shell it. I'm going to create this to be an actual box. Right now, it's just a block with holes in it. So I'm going to pick my shell option up here at the top. So I'm going to pick shell, and I'm going to select the surface that's going to be shelled out. Or if you imagine this being a block of aluminum, the part where the end mill or the cutters are coming from. We're going to come from the top to hollow this out. So we want to pick this surface here. It selects it, and now it's telling you what thickness you want the rest of the, the remaining part to be. Uh, point one seems to be not enough, given that these holes are half an inch away from the edge, or a quarter inch. I'm sorry, for half, from the from both edges. Point one would not really cover them. It would go around it and create something, probably give you an error. And I can show that 
if I say say that, you see that it, although it didn't give us an error, it went around and created something that's extremely difficult, if not almost impossible, to machine. You don't really want to do that. You want to create. You don't want to create these pockets here because it's, it's uh, unnecessary and it's extremely complicated to machine. So what we're going to do instead of milling those out, we'll go around them. And the way I do that is I'm going to right click on my shell option, edit feature, and I'm going to give it a something thicker than that. I'll pick perhaps 5 sixteenths and see what that looks like. Yeah, that seems to be a little too much, but see now you, you notice how it went around it. There you go. So now what that means is that the thickness that you created is half an inch. And anything, any other features such as holes or any other cavities you create will have a, a thickness, a wall thickness, if you will, of about, you see, half a quarter inch. I could reduce this. I could, I could try to go even less. Uh, again, all I really wanted was to avoid um, that really difficult operation from earlier. So this looks much better. It's less material, so your your box will be lighter. Now, another thing I do want to add is that these corners here can be very complicated to machine. So you have to think about that when do when especially this depth um, when you're designing. So what I'll do is I'll add. Uh, rounds to all my sharp edges or fillets. So I go to my fillet option here at the top. I'm going to click, select one of the edges. See I have each one of my features has two edges and I have eight. So that is 16, that is 16 edges I need to select. However, to avoid doing that, I just select one. And this quick, this menu that pops up right next to my uh, cursor can, uh, allows me to select multiple at once. If I just hover over this one, it shows you that it, it can select an additional 15 edges. And I know by looking at them uh, with the pink purple uh, selection that those are the ones I want. Uh, alternatively, there's other options that it can have. Uh, you can select outside edges, uh, inside edges, right features, that's 47 edges. That's, that's probably too many for what I want. So I'll click I'll select the first one. It automatically selects all 16. I check OK. And now my part is completely filled on the inside. I'll save this. I'll set this to be an electronic box. While you're at it, you can add a material to it that could potentially become useful when you create uh, engineering drawings and the material of the part is extrapolated from the uh, part properties. So what I'll do is I'll go to my material here on the left, I'll right click, I'll go to edit material and I'll assign it a material. I'll select aluminum, I'll select a very generic aluminum such as 6061, so I scroll down to where I find it, 6061 alloy, that seems to be a good one, and then I hit apply. It sort of changes color a little bit just to let you know that it has changed. So now on the left you see that it's 6061 alloy. If you want to find out, for instance, how much this weighs now, given that you assigned it a, a material, those properties will be a lot more accurate. In order to do that, you can really quickly go to the Evaluate tab and then go to the Mass Properties here. Um, and here you see something like Mass is one, one and a quarter pounds. Um, that is because you assigned it a, a material. Now I'll create a top for it. So I select the new part. Again, I'll sketch from the top. So this exercise is essentially the same with the own difference that, I believe this is 8 by 4, that I want to show a different kind of hole. So I'll extrude my part. This is a lid, so um, maybe a quarter inch. There we go. Now I'll repeat 
my whole pattern from earlier. So now I have my holes on my lid. Now I'll go to my hole wizard. Now I know that the bottom ones are 440 tabbed holes. So I want these obviously not to be tapped, but to be clearance holes. But the kind of clearance holes that I want will depend on my desired application. Uh, so I could select just, just straight holes. I can go to inch and then I can go to clearance holes here on the type screw clearances. And then I can select my holes, but this is just essentially it's going to give me a hold of a certain diameter. I wanted to actually have, I want to use, be able to use uh, flat head screws because I want my screw heads to be hidden or to be recessed or at least flush with this surface so that nothing protrudes from my top surface. So I'm going to select a countersink hole. So if I first select the countersink hole type. Uh, I do want it in inches, so I'll leave it there. Uh, flat head screw, uh, yeah. So this number here, flat head screw 100, means that that is the degrees that the head has, uh, in or 82. So the degree is between this line here and this line here. So it's it's like a V that the side view of the flat head screw creates. Now, uh, 82 degrees is more common than 100, so I'm going to select 82 degrees. Now the size, we know that the bottom portion of our part is 440, so our clearance will be 4. Now there is no 40 part, there's the, the second dash portion because this is just a clearance hole. There's no threads per inch, this is just a clearance hole. So, and so I'll pick a 4, number 4. Uh, my fit, it's going to be either close, normal, loose. I'll pick normal, I don't want it to be too tight or too loose. And uh, I don't want it to be blind, blind meaning a certain specific distance. I want it to be through all, through, all, through the entire part. Positions, I select my top surface. And now I'll again right click, quick snaps, point snap. That I'm selecting really quickly. And you can see that the yellow preview that it creates, it already shows you the countersink that that hole will be creating. Now we hit OK. There we have it. I'll assign material as well. Edit material. Now if you find yourself using a single material often, like in this case, you can add it to your favorites. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'll click 6061 alloy. And you can right click here and you can add it to favorites. Oh, I already had her as my favorites. So I apply. And you'll see it that next time when you click here, when you right click on materials, it'll be part of these. And then you can see the mine's been added here at the bottom. 6061. So now this is I'll save it. Now I'll call it electronic box lid. Now there we have it. Now you can see that your part is finished, your electronic closure box is finished. I'll make this transparent, so I'll click on it, change transparency just so I can see the inside. And you can see how we easily created a very useful uh, box. We can now create more things. You can create bosses on the inside where you can start mounting PCBs, you can start mounting uh, many different kinds of maybe a fan or anything else that you may require for your own application. Alright, well this has been a quick uh, lesson on holes, hole wizards and shelling, as well as a quick uh, refresher on assemblies. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.